In this presentation, hi, my name is Noor Hameda, and in this presentation, I'm going to be discussing one of Spinoza's controversial theories, which he strongly believes in and applies it to all aspects of the world, which is the principle of sufficient, sufficient reason. I believe that the principle of sufficient reason is actually quite flawed, and many philosophers throughout the years have been trying to discredit this principle and have been trying to prove that it cannot be applied to all aspects of the world. To begin with, according to Spinoza, he states that for every fact f, there must be a sufficient reason why f is the case. And the first time he discusses the principle of sufficient reason is in his first published work uh, in the, called the 1663 Geometrical Exposition of, uh, of Descartes' principle of, uh, uh, Principles of Philosophy, where he states nothing exists of which it cannot be asked what is the cause or reason why it exists. And he also mentions in the ethics, from a given determinate cause, the effect follows necessarily. And conversely, if there is no determinate cause, it is impossible for an effect to follow. Here Spinoza gives an, expi uh, an explanation of his belief in the principle of sufficient reason, where he, explain, where he explains that causes necessitate effects. Therefore, causes provide a sufficient reason for its effects. And since nothing happens without a cause, it means that everything has a sufficient reason for its existence. However, Spinoza states in his treatise on the emendation of the intellect that only one thing can exist without a cause. And the, where he states that thought, is, that thought is also called true, which involves objectively the essence of some principle that does not have a cause and is, no, and is, and is known through itself and in itself. Even though in this quotation, uh, Spinoza doesn't directly tell us what he means by um, some principle. However, since we understand his substance monism, which is something that exists in such a way as to depend on no other thing for its existence. And since he mentions in this quotation and is known through itself and in itself, we can tell that by, uh, by the word some principle, he actually means God. Uh, one of the philosophers in the 18th century who critiqued Spinoza's principle of sufficient reason is uh, David Hume. Hume gives two main reasons as to why he doesn't believe in the principle of sufficient reason as, uh, as strictly as Spinoza. Uh, which the two reasons are the critique of causation and his critique of the theory of induction. To begin with the critique of causation, uh, Hume explains that two events appear in conjunction. There is no way for us to figure out the nature of their conjunction. Therefore, he argues against the concept of cause and effect, since just like we assume that one thing causes another, we can also assume that one thing cannot cause another. And his main argument comes from the fact that he believes that the concept of causation is a habit of association based on our, uh, on our past experiences, and he believes that a causality is an instinctive belief that originates from our, our, own, biological habit, from our own biological habits, and we can neither disprove nor discredit this belief. Uh, moreover, the critique of induction. Induction, by definition, is drawing conclusions based on past experiences. Uh, this theory can be easily dis discredited since we can gain new data or knowledge that can totally disprove our past conclusions. And moreover, the principle of induction in some ways states that we can make predictions, uh, based, uh, predictions of the future based on events that occurred in the past, which I believe we simply cannot, and uh, Hume also believes so, since there is a huge uncertainty where uh, uncertainty for in the future that we can we cannot simply make conclusions based on events that occur in the, occurred in the past and as Hume stated in his critique of causation that we cannot tell the nature of connection between particular events we cannot use these events to make assumptions about the future uh, moreover Hume, uh, Hume believes that the assumption that something will continue to happen because it always did before is a circular is a circular belief and lacks foundation and just like causation, he, belie he believes that induction rises from our instinctual beliefs. In conclusion, uh, in conclusion I believe I side more with uh, Hume's theories, since uh, Spinoza's belief in the principle of sufficient reason is actually quite flawed. However, I, uh, I believe that we shouldn't abandon completely the principle of sufficient reason, since most of the things do have a reasons for, do have a reasons for, for their existence. But I believe we must understand that the principle of sufficient reason has many limitations uh, and, we, um, and we must not apply it to all aspects of the world and we certainly must not apply it, to, apply it to things that we cannot actually physically experience, like substances and uh, the world as a whole. Here are my references. Thank you.